verse 19. The word of the Lord speaks to us on this wise from the New King James Version. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into bones. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more of more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his statue? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you O oh, you of little faith. Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. I want to share with you finding freedom today. Amen. Finding freedom. Freedom. Um, let me just begin as this uh, continuation of the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, let me begin with the legend uh, of Thomas and Godophorus as it was told by Mrs. Jameson in Sacred and Legendary Art. Uh, the story goes this way, as the legend is told. When St. Thomas was at Caesarea, our Lord appeared to him and said, The king of the Indies, Gondufarus, had sent his provost, Abernes, to seek for workmen well versed in the science of architecture, 
who shall build for him a palace finer than that of the emperor of Rome. Behold, now I will send thee to him. And Thomas went, and Benufrus commanded him, Now I will send thee or, to build for him a magnificent palace. And commanding him to build this palace, he gave him a heap of gold and silver uh, for the task that was in front of him. King went into a distant country and was for two years absent out of their sight. Meanwhile, Thomas, instead of building a palace, distributed all the treasure among the poor and sick. When the king returned, he was full of wrath. I mean, he was angry. And he commanded St. Thomas should be seized and cast into prison. And he was uh, thinking of what horrible death he could prescribe to him. But in the meantime, the brother of the king died, and the king resolved to erect for him a most magnificent tomb for the dead man. After that he had been dead four days, suddenly arose and sat upright and said to the king, The man whom thou wouldest torture is a servant of God. Behold, I have been in paradise, and the angels showed to me a wondrous palace of gold and silver and precious stone. And they said, This is the palace that Thomas the architect had built for thy brother King Godufrus. And when the king heard these things, he ran to the prison and delivered the apostle. And Thomas said to him, Knowest thou not that those who would possess heavenly things have little care for the things of this earth? Thou art in heaven rich palaces without number, which were prepared from the beginning of the world for those who would purchase and possess through faith and charity. Uh, what Gondufarus thought he would do was build himself something of earthly value, a palace that would supersede the emperor of Rome. But what Thomas did instead was build him a palace that had eternal significance and value. As that old song says, only what you do for Christ will last. Only what you do for him will be counted in the end. And that's the significance of that legend. Is that while on the one hand, Gondufarus um, was trying to get earthly recognition. God was saying, no, no. I want you to do something that would have lasting value. And it's the same lesson that he's been teaching us for the past three Sundays. As we looked at him, give us warnings against hypocrisy. And uh, he would share after each warning against hypocrisy in the area of giving alms, in the area of prayer, and in the area of fasting. He said those who would do it out of hypocrisy have their reward. The honor and recognition that they would receive from men is all that they would ultimately get. And so just as God warns against hypocrisy in those first three messages that we've shared earlier, God now warns against worldly mindedness. And he shares with us that uh, we ought to be warned against uh, what kind of choices we make and what cares we value catch this. In verses 19 through 24, it's about our choices. In 25 through 34, it's about our cares and concerns. 
And so God is still sharing with us this train of thought uh, as, he, as he shares with us. And just as he shared in the previous messages uh, before on hypocrisy, there is here again a warning. Um, there is here something that we are to avoid. And so as we take up in verse 19, he immediately gets to it. And he shares with us what it is that we ought to avoid in our lives. And he says that we ought to avoid, he says, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. He shares with us that we we, we're, we're, we're not to, uh, uh, and, and the, 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 the way that he, the, the word play here uh, that is used, literally what um, the first few words is saying to us is treasure, not treasures. Uh, that word lay up is to treasure uh, or to store. Um, and he says treasure, not treasures. Interesting wordplay makes the impact um, of, of us uh, putting and setting our hearts on stuff uh, to make the picture plain and to see it clearly. Um, we see plenty of individuals around us in the world in which we live today who treasure treasures. Uh, what does that mean? It means that uh, they live just to get a little bit more. Uh, just to get another slice of the pie. They, they've had three slices, but they, they, they want another slice. Can I get a witness? You, anybody know somebody like that? Um, they, 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 they have a Mercedes and a Rolls Royce, but they got to get uh, the Range Rover. Wow. Can I get a witness? Yes. They have a house on the West Coast and the East Coast, but they want one in Georgia, too. Wow. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Can't live but, but one at a time. Um, treasure, not treasures. Uh, how, how many folk have started out with great wealth and wound up in bankruptcy because they had houses all over the place? I mean, they, they were wealthy. They had made millions at some point or another in their lives. Uh, but because of mismanagement uh, uh, and because they just had to have it all, um, they lost it all. And he, said, he, he, says, he says, in your choices, in your cares, I, I want to warn you. Um, he says, after all, the stuff that we accumulate down here will, will, will ultimately leave us one way or another. I mean, he, he, he makes it plain and clear. He says it, it, it's, going to, it's going to leave one way or another. We are going to have to part ways with our stuff. All right. He lists here uh, some things for our consideration. He, he talks about moth, and many of us have been plagued by moth. Uh, many of us have lost good clothes. Because we left a suit in the closet too long unattended. Uh, and they got in there without us knowing or detecting it. And when we finally got around to pulling it out of the closet, we noticed that it had little holes and, and we don't smoke. Can I get a witness? <laughs> the smokers know what I'm talking about. Come on. 
Yes, yeah, so, and, and, and we're trying to figure out why is it that our, our, our fabric is, is, is coming apart? Why is it that, that there are holes in, in, in the fabric of our clothing? It's because some moths, some little creatures got in there and made a meal off of our clothing. And he says, he says, moths will get you. But what Mark don't get, he says, there is the deterioration of the elements that are against you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Says rust. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that that which that word there comes from the word which means that which eats. And that's absolutely what Mark, what rust does. It eats. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, if you if you have a, a, a boat or some type of a vessel that yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sits in the water for a long, prolonged period of time, uh, it, it it has on it anoids. Yes. Anoids are sacrificial devices that are placed on uh, uh, the boat uh, so that. When the rust comes to eat, it sends off electrodes and, and it, it says to the rust, come here and eat me first. And uh, it will save your motor. It will save uh, uh, any metal that you have on the boat from getting eaten up because the animals, uh, those sacrifices, Sacrificial devices uh, are, are calling the rust. It knows the rust is coming. It knows that the salt water is coming. It knows it. And so it says, come here, come to me, and eat me first. And so he says, uh, what, what the moth don't get, the rust will come and attack. And what the moth and rust don't get, he says, uh, those thieves. Ah, those, those agitating individuals who refuse to work uh, for themselves, uh, yes, have made for themselves a career in taking other folks' stuff. Mm. He says, they will come. While you're not looking, they will, they will raise up your window, crawl in through the night, and they'll take your stuff that you done worked for he says, that's why I want to warn you against treasuring treasures. Yes. says, because if you start treasuring this stuff and you would make it your priority in life, yes, you'll, you'll have some difficult days and some long nights. Yes. Yes. I remember when I was just a boy coming up in college. Uh, money was money didn't come easy. Can I get a witness? Uh, it didn't grow on trees. Uh, yeah, it still don't. <laughs> uh, and, 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 and and I remember somebody stole a hundred fresh crisp hundred dollar bill. Uh, stole a hundred dollar bill, and, I, and boy, I was mad because I tell you. Money just don't grow on trees. And I, I had my money figured out. I mean, I had it figured out. What went to gas to get me back and forth to school? What was for insurance? Uh, what was for lunch? I had it all mapped out. I mean, I had it in envelopes uh, so that I didn't go over budget. Uh, and, and, so, and so I just, I just was outraged. I was in sin. But through life, God allowed me to lose more than a hundred dollar bill. Yes, he did. And uh, God showed me, and uh, it was just as plain as day and crystal clear. As God allowed me to lose some stuff. I mean, I, in one car, I lost a motor three times in the same car. Um, and I ain't got time to tell you the story on that one. <laughs> but God allowed me uh, to rebuild that engine uh, and, 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 and it showed me amen that everything in life is just temporary and you are not you are not hold on too tightly to stuff 
I mean, that was a 79, uh, that was a 79 Buick Regal, and back in the day, those were the car. And uh, God says, you don't hold on to stuff. And you don't put stuff above me. That's right. And listen, what God is saying here in the text is he's not condemning the idea of planning in our lives. Right. I, I want you to be clear here. And, and don't think that God is contradicting himself in other places in scripture. He's not, he's not condemning the idea of planning in our lives. After all, Jesus warns against the foolish builder who failed to count the cost. Uh, as well as the man who built on sand rather than a solid foundation. And so God has uh, nothing against the idea of planning in our lives. Preparing ourselves for uh, our future. Uh, but God does have a problem with worry. I want you to look at the text. God is warning us very strongly here against worry. Um, he, 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 he wants us to understand that, that worry distracts us from what is most important in life. And my brothers and sisters, uh, as much as we would hate to admit it, we often find ourselves drifting down uh, the highway into the lane uh, uh, of, of planning over into the lane of worry. Yes, uh, we would like to think that we are planning. We would love to believe that we are being good stewards. Uh, but the reality and the fact of the matter is, uh, is that we have given in to the enticement of being worriers. Uh, and he says, I, I want to warn you against worry. And in this text, you see God uh, warned us against worrying over and over again. He, 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 would get our attention against worry. You would see him in 25, do not worry. You would see him in, in uh, 27, uh, uh, which of you by worrying. Uh, in verse 28, he says, why do you worry? In verse 31, he says, uh, do not worry. In verse 34, he says, do not worry. God is concerned about us getting entangled in the trap of work. Yes, God wants to warn us against worry because worry distracts us from what is most important in life. The problem with worry is that it is what is not what uh, is, 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 is about what is not accomplished while I am worried. Yeah. And that's what a distraction is. Uh, it, it keeps us from accomplishing what we can while we worry about what we can't. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> so he says in that 25th verse, therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. He says, listen here, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Yeah. What he's getting at is while you're worrying uh, about trivial things, uh, you are taking your eye off the ball in terms of more important things. Uh, he says that some other things be, besides food and clothes uh, that you ought to be concerned about. Well, he says the first problem with worry is that I, I'm not accomplishing uh, something uh, while I'm worrying. Uh, the second thing is uh, the issue with worrying is that I am overlooking today's opportunities and concerns. Listen, he says in verse 34, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. 
he makes a contrast between the here and now versus the, the then and then. Yes, uh, he says, uh, sufficient for the day is its own troubles. He said, in other words, you got enough stuff to worry uh, to deal with on today than to have your mind fixed on uh, tomorrow. Yes, uh, yes, uh, you, 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 you have today's opportunity, you have today's concerns uh, to, to deal with, but you can't deal with today's concerns because you're trying to handle tomorrow's issue. Uh, he says, uh, worry distracts us from what is most important. Uh, he says, worry is wasteful. Yes, uh, it's a waste of time. Yes, uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, it, it's a waste of emotions. Uh, yes, uh, it, it's, it's a waste of, of our willpower and, and our strength. Uh, it, it's wasteful. Yes, uh, he says in verse 27, which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his statue? Yes, uh, in other words, he says, which of us, uh, yes, can will ourselves to grow? Yes, uh, how, how many of us can think ourselves uh, into being tall? Yes, uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, he says, if we, uh, we are worrying uh, about how tall we are, yes, we just wasting time. Yes, uh, if we're worried, uh, yes, uh, uh, about where our food, uh, yes, clothing is going to come from, we're just wasting time. Uh, God says, uh, yes, it's wasteful to worry. Uh, God says, uh, worrying stunts our growth. Yes, uh, right there in verse 28, he says, why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field and how they grow and all of that. And he comes to the end of that verse uh, and he says, Oh you of little faith. Yes, uh, worry stunts our growth. Yes, uh, Jesus refers to them uh, as individuals uh, who have little faith. Yes, uh, if we want to grow up in our faith, if we want to mature in our faith, if we want to elevate our faith, uh, we won't do it by worrying. Uh, God says that worrying stunts our growth. Yes, uh, but I, can I take it to another level? Yes, because uh, not only does it spiritually stunts our growth, uh, but if we spend our time at night tossing and turning, uh, Worrying over our problems. Uh, yes, uh, when we finally supposed to get up when the alarm clock goes off in the morning, uh, we don't have uh, the focus, uh, the presence of mind. Uh, we don't have the strength or the energy to deal with the day ahead of us uh, because we spent all of our energy the night before uh, tossing uh, and turning. Uh, it stunts our growth. Yes, uh, and, and so God would warn us against worry, uh, and he comes down to that 31st verse. He says, therefore, do not worry, mm -hmm. saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? He says, uh, I, I don't want you to be creatures uh, of worry. I, I don't want you to be creatures uh, who are always concerned uh, yes, uh, uh, about what is next. Uh, yes, uh, but I want you to walk in faith. Uh, be a good planner. Yes, uh, but be an inefficient worrier. Can I get a witness? Yes, uh, I want you to put worrying to the side. Uh, yes, uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, put planning uh, on the forefront. Yes, uh, and, and, and Dale Carnegie wrote uh, uh, of his interview with Henry Ford. Yes, uh, when Henry Ford was uh, uh, about 78 years old, uh, he had an opportunity to interview Henry Ford. Uh, and, and he was expecting to find, uh, yes, a nervous old man. And uh, when asked if he worried uh, Ford replied, no. And then listen to what he said next. 
He said, I believe God is managing affairs uh, and he doesn't need any advice from me. Um, yes, with God in charge, I believe that everything will work out for the best in the end. So what is there to worry about? Yes, uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, Henry Ford's philosophy on life uh, is a good philosophy that you and I all adopt in our own living spaces. Uh, yes, uh, because God's got it all in control. Yes, uh, a, a preacher who was retiring, uh, yes, uh, he'd been a pastor all uh, Yes, of his years, and now he was retiring from the pastorate. Uh, yes, uh, and folk were concerned of him and what he would do next. Uh, yes, uh, and so they approached him and just boldfacedly asked, uh, Well, what are you going to do? Yes, uh, now that you're no longer pastoring, uh, you're up in years, uh, what are you going to do? And he said to them with the same sense of assurance and boldness, uh, he said, I plan on God being alive. Yes, as long as God is alive, everything else is going to be all right. Can I get a witness here? And that leads me to the next point. God would warn us against worrying, but he would instruct us to learn how to trust him. Yes, God wants us to learn to trust in him. Yes, uh, and so he says, first of all, I want you to learn to position yourself for the long haul. Yes, uh, I, I want you to position yourself, uh, yes, for more than just today and tomorrow. I want you to position yourself for way down the road where you can't see down the street or around the corner. I, I want you to look at those things. So he says, uh, in verse 20, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven yeah. where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. Yeah. My brothers and sisters, uh, we got to have some long range plan. Uh -huh. We have some short range goals, but we got to have some long range goals. Yes. Can I get away with it? God says uh, that we've got to not only long, learn to position ourselves for the long haul, but we've got to learn to position ourselves in God. Yes, uh, he says in that 32nd verse, for after all these things, the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. Yes, he says you got to position uh, yourself in God. Yeah. God knows just what it is that you need. What that you need. Yes, yes, yes. yes, I hear the songwriter say it like this. I know Jesus, he will fix it for you. Yes, he for he knows just what to do. And so, my brothers and sisters, whenever you pray, just let God have his way. Because I know Jesus, he will fix it for you. Thank you yes, uh, we've got to position uh, ourselves yes. in God. Yes, but we also got to learn to position ourselves in faith in God. Yes, uh, faith releases us. Yes, uh, we find freedom through our faith. Yes, uh, and he gives us two examples, uh, yes, of little creatures of nature. Yes, uh, he gives us an example out in the field. Right. Yes, he says, uh, I want you to turn your heads to the sky, uh, and I want you to look at the little birds, uh, yes, uh, as they flap their wings. Uh, I want you to look at the little birds uh, as they sit in their nest in the tree. Uh, I want you to look at them uh, and find an example. Yes, uh, then I want you to just allow your eyes to go across the landscape of the fields uh, and, and check out the lilies. Uh, yes, uh, as they just simply wave in the wind. Yes, uh, and, and they look beautiful, don't they? They look nice. Uh, yes, I, I want you to see them. Uh, yes, he says, Solomon, uh, yes, though he was wealthy, uh, though he was wise, uh, he was not in, he was not in cold like the lilies of the field. Uh, they just have a natural sense of beauty about them. Uh, yes, uh, and, and, and guess what? Uh, they don't do nothing yet. 
<laughs> yes, they, they thrive and depend on their connectedness to God. They're connected to the soil which God provides. They're connected to the water that comes from heaven that God provides. What I'm getting at here, yes, is that God will take care of you. Yes, each and every day. Yes, he says, don't you worry. Yes, he says, as that song says, be happy. Yeah. Yes, don't you worry. Yes, God's got it all in control. Yes, and so you ought to just lean and depend on him. Yes, because my brothers and sisters, faith informs. Yes, uh, look at verse uh, 26. Uh, he says, are you not of more value than they? Yes, yes uh, if you just start worrying for just one moment, yes, your faith will inform you that God is looking out for you. Yes, uh, God says uh, that you are so important that I'll send my son from heaven down. Uh, yes, that you might have a right to the tree of life. You're more valuable than they. Yeah, they yes, uh, and listen what he says in, 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 in the end of verse 30. He says, will he not much more clothe you? My brothers and sisters, uh, what he'll do for the birds in the air and what he'll do for the lilies in the field, uh, God will do a whole lot more for you and for me. Uh, yes, God clothes the lilies. God will put clothes on you and me. Yes, Lord. Yes. Won't he do it? Yes, he will. Yes, uh, but I got I to gotta give you this last point here. Yes, yes he says, don't you dare worry. He warns us against worry. Yes, uh, and he encourages us on the flip side that we would learn to trust in him. Uh, yes, uh, and then thirdly, he then shares with us uh, that we had a reward uh, in the end. Yes, uh, if we would not worry, if we would trust, uh, God has a reward for you and for me. Uh, Yes, uh, he says, uh, my brothers and sisters are uh, on, on the adverse side of things. Uh, for where your treasure is, uh, there your heart will be also. And so if your treasure is in earthly things, uh, they're temporary. But if your treasure is in, uh, in eternal things, uh, yes, uh, they will last uh, for a long time. Uh, God's trying to get the point across, uh, just as he did with the previous three messages. Uh, you can go for the temporary, uh, or you can hang your hat on the eternal. Uh, God wants you to know uh, that God wants you uh, to have something that is lasting, something that is imperishable. God wants you to have uh, Life. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, he is. That's why he says to us, he says, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I don't want you just to be having buyouts. Yes, because plants got buyouts. Yes, that's just biology. You know, that's every living thing. Yes, uh, you look around you and the birds got buyouts. Yes, uh, you look around you uh, and the snakes got buyouts. Yes, uh, the grass uh, got buyouts. Uh, yes, uh, but I stopped by to tell you that I want you to have more than buyouts. I want you to have Zoe. Yes, uh, that's just, that's not just me, the ability to be a living being. Uh, yes. A creation of some sort, but that's life more abundantly. Yes, I want you to have Zoe. I want you to be somebody who can stand that power. I want you to be somebody who can think. I want you to be somebody who can worship the Creator. I want you to be somebody who can come in the presence of the Lord. Yes, I know we think that we do it all. Yes, 
and now I am old. Yes. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging bread. Yes, Lord. yes, can I get a witness in here? Yes, let him ask of God. You need a little wisdom, let him ask of God. Who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. God will supply your needs. Yes, I hear 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6 and 7 say, Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. God will do some exalting. Yes, you just humble yourself in his sight. God will raise you up. Then I hear verse 7 say, casting all your cares on him, for he cares for you. Yes, yes uh, be not dismayed, whatever be ties. God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide. God will take care of you. God will, won't he do it? Yes, he will. Through every day and all. The way uh, God will take care of you. There is freedom uh, in Jesus Christ, uh, whom the Son uh, set free yeah. is free indeed. Yeah. Yeah. In the Old Testament, you have to go back with another bird off. In the Old Testament, you have to come back annually with it off. Yes, but I got a good news for you this morning. Jesus paid it all. And all to him out. Jesus shed his blood at Calvary. No longer do I got to come with a dove offering. No longer do I got to come with a ram offering. Jesus done paid it all. And all to him out. Whom Jesus set free is free. Indeed. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We find freedom in our relationship with God. It's not by pulling our hair out. It's not because we stay up tossing and turning all night long. But as we are connected to Him, God will just start flooding our minds with, yes, with thoughts and, and plans a ways how we can make a way and how we can get this going and that going. God will just give it to us when we rely on Him. Freedom in Jesus. As we stand on our feet, doors of the church open. If you have a prayer request concerning your life, you want to share it with the Lord, you want to just cast your cares on His shoulders. This is your opportunity, this is your time. 